Hi folks, Clay Black, LBC Woodworks, Fulton, Kentucky. Welcome into my shop and welcome back to my new YouTube channel. Today we're starting on a very unique product. I make cake stands, one of many things I make. And all my cake stands are usually completely turned on the lathe in three parts, the platter, the spindle, and the base. But today we're going to take it a different route only the base and spindle will be turned. The platter is where the uniqueness comes in. See, here in Kentucky, we're known for three things. Bluegrass, horses, and bourbon. What many people don't know is by law, in the state of Kentucky, you cannot call your product bourbon if you use the barrel more than once. Barrels can be used one time. They're often discarded, sold to wineries, breweries, and such. And also, people such as myself, woodworkers, pick the, the barrels up and we make products out of them. Well, I started this not too long ago and I've made a couple of serving boards, cutting boards, all out of whiskey barrel staves. And you can see the charring lines where it's been glued together. Now, what is a stave, you ask? A stave is the vertical piece of wood that makes up the body of a barrel. You can see the lines on here where the barrel rings were, the lip where, when rounded, this is where the lids snap in, both top and on the bottom. They're charred white oak, and we have to deal with this charring. We don't want to completely remove it because we want the, the line showing between each stave as we glue them up, but we can't leave it like this or it won't glue very well. This is all solid white oak and it'll make a very strong, very durable platter for a cake stand. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, in preparation, once I get these ripped down, I'll use my orbital sander and my oscillating sander. I'll use the oscillating spindle sander to help clean up the charring on the inside edge, and I'll use my orbital sander to clean up the outer edges because we have to get a good glue surface, but we want to leave some of that blackness that gives definition between each board. Okay, we've now moved over to the bandsaw. We have our feather board set up. And each stage is wider at the middle, the apex of the curvature of the piece of wood. So we set it up and it gets a little snug on the feather board going through right at that apex. But then it eases up and we're able to go on through. We did have to make an adjustment, but that was really no big deal. We're going to spare you watching us cut all these stays and just tell you how I would cut one. And it, it's a little bit different because you're dealing with a curved piece of wood and so you're not dealing with a flat surface setting on the bed of the tabletop the whole, whole way through the cut. But it works out uh, and everything comes out according to plan. Okay, so now we have all our staves rough cut to width, approximately an inch and a half. And like I said, I'll, I'll, I'm shooting between 12 and 13 inches diameter. The negative side or bad side of dealing with whiskey barrel staves is the charring. It gets everywhere. You're gonna have a mess handling them, resawing them, and you've got to go behind yourself and clean your saw tops and your bench tops because that char will stain other wood when you work on future projects. The messiest part is the sanding. I take it outdoors because it will create a mess and that stuff just gets everywhere. And here I can just take the leaf blower and blow it off whenever I'm done.
So as you can see, okay, we are using Type Bond 3 in this glue up because uh, I just like it and uh, we will wash this in water every once in a while whenever we get through removing a cake from it. I know it says Type Bond 2, but I just cleaned that out and reused it whenever I got my gallon of Type Bond 3. I turned that last one up on edge because it doesn't require glue on the outside of it. And if I lay it down flat, I forget every time, which I'm sure some of you have done before, and I apply glue to it, and now I have to stop and clean it off. And that's always a mess. Again, using a liberal amount of glue. Don't be shy when working with stays. You gotta, don't have a perfectly jointed surface like you normally do with cutting boards and other glue up, such as tabletops. So you wanna make sure you have enough glue. Because these are curved, you'll have, you'll need to turn your clamps at different angles to take care, to handle the apex, or, or not the apex, but the curvature of the board, so you'll get a good square clamp. Excuse me. Hey, y'all like my little workbench. I'll show you that on another video, but I have to give a shout out to Jay Bates, Jay's Custom Creations. You can find him on the internet. When I first built my shop, I needed an outfeed table in a rush. And he had a plan for an outfeed table built out of one sheet of plywood. 
and it's half inch and I am amazed at how sturdy it is. I, and it has been abused. Rode hard and put up wet, as they say. But that's okay. Sheet of plywood isn't that expensive. And a push comes to shove. Tear it apart and build another. Although I do have plans for a nicer bench in coming months. But for today, we're going to wear this J-Bage bench out. And you can see the mess on the table, what I was talking about earlier. That's just from handling the pieces of wood. And I think we've got it here. You know, none of them are exactly milled to exact dimensions, so there's a little unevenness. We'll take care of that with the planer. But for now, the clamping is done. And what we're going to do when we epoxy it is we will start off with Total Boat's penetrating epoxy. And this, this helps prevent off-gassing, which creates excess bubbles, but we're gonna get it down in our seams real well, and it, it helps to fill some of the voids. And then we'll, once it's cured, we'll come back and do the tabletop epoxy, and we'll pour it just in the seams and, and tape the bottom side and let it just seep, seep into those holes and fill that gap. And once, Okay, we've made an executive decision. Being that I'm new to the world of YouTube and I hate watching long videos, I made the decision that we're gonna break this video up into part one, part two, and possibly part three. We don't wanna put out videos that people get bored in the middle of and turn it off. So when you watch this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell for notifications because you want to come back and see part two and part three to see the finished product. But all in all, everything went as planned today. There was nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, one thing I do want to point out when I'm ripping those on the bandsaw, the wider part at the apex of the curve on the stage it, it's wider than it is at the ends when they manufacture the barrel. So you'll get, if you set your feather board up at the ends, it's going to get a little tight in the middle, but it'll make it on through it. Sometimes you might have to adjust the feather board as I did, but that's okay. Um, was to be expected. Glue up went very well. Uh, glad I have enough clamps, at least for this project. Uh, and you know, I can't say enough good about Bessie clamps. I have their probably 30 or 40 of the Bessie pipe clamps over here on my wall off camera. Uh, I have a dozen or more of the F-style clamps and I really, really like them. Uh, you know, I can't thank Woodcraft enough. Uh, I got all of those uh, early on when I first built my shop. Uh, I had a few smaller clamps before but when I built it I wanted to stock up and make sure I had plenty uh, but thank you for viewing today and subscribe click the notification bell and we'll see you in part two